Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce you to today's guest, Cindy Arledge. MBA. She is a number one international best-selling author, founder of the Legacy Family Revolution, and visionary leader of the Legacy Family Planning Association. Traditional estate planning provides dismal results with an 85% failure rate because it relies on legal documents to protect financial assets. Failure is measured by the destruction of the family, loss of assets, and upheaval within the family. Legacy family plans are covenants or family constitutions that provide governance and foster family relationships to prevent the unleashing of the curse of inheritance. Cindy's passion to protect families was born out of the pain she experienced after her parents passed away only eight months apart. Cindy is committed to disrupting the traditional estate planning by sharing these critical family preparation planning tools. Legacy family planning is the secret weapon of successful wealth transfer and has been used by the ultra-high net worth families to transfer their wealth for generations, an option previously unavailable to families of lesser wealth. In The Curse of Inheritance, Cindy shares the real reason wealth transfers fail and how to protect your family from being broke, bitter, and blaming you. In The Legacy Family Way, Cindy provides step-by-step instructions to foster family relationships to create lasting wealth. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Tammy. It's great to be here. I'm really excited to learn about this because, oh my goodness, an 85% failure rate in transferring assets and in estate planning, that's just, that means only 15% work. So tell me more about who you help. Well, Tammy, I help financially successful families and business owners. I help them by creating their legacy family plan, which is the, one of the best pillars of creating lasting wealth, and it's so little known. So can you tell me a little more about that and maybe about some of the myths and misconceptions about failed inheritances? Well, here's, here's the sad statistic. More than 55% of adults don't have a will. And without a will, your family is left uh, lost and they're not protected. And the, and the reason that I don't concentrate on helping those people is because they actually um, haven't even taken the most basic steps to protect their family. Um, I, that's why I concentrate on financially successful families and business owners because the myths and misconceptions about inheritance is that it's about the money. Most people think money is the problem. But in truth, it does complicate it and it does compound the problem. But the real problem is that we avoid death. We avoid the topic of death. The so failed inheritance – go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say – so because we avoid the topic of death, that creates issues and, and go on and tell me more. So the truth is that our failed inheritance is actually the effect of the problem. The real problem is in our avoidance of death, we do not prepare our family. And when we pass away, this monster of jealousy, fear, and selfishness is unleashed because the family is unprepared for life after, after the, their loved one is dead. Wow. So, so we're afraid of death. We leave our families unprepared. And how does this happen? You would think that people who had money would be thinking about that 
legacy, and you actually call it the curse of inheritance. Can, can you expand on that? Well, sure. So in my study, after my parents passed away eight months apart, uh, my family was devastated. And in that devastation and the loss of relationships of the very people that had known me my entire life, the ones that I had counted on to get me through this pain, we splintered because we weren't prepared. And, you know, money do, money does play a part because it compounds or amplifies who we are. For instance, if you're greedy and you receive a lot of money, you're going to be more greedy. If you're generous and you receive a lot of money, you're going to be more generous. So money amplifies our relationship with it. And with the inheritance situation, we are receiving money that we didn't earn. You may know it as the free lunch. Uh, the capitalists or the Kabbalists call it the bread of shame. And the reason that the curse of inheritance is, is I call it the curse, is because think about it. Someone had to die for you to receive this financial gift, presumably someone that you loved. And so with this unearned, unprepared heir receiving this money, amplifying who they are, you can see how easy it would be to um, have 85% failure rate. Yes, and like you said, if you're greedy, you'll just still be greedy, and you're, you're just going to always be who you are, and the money is just, like you said, it's just going to amplify that. So do you have any methods of preventing the curse of inheritance? Absolutely, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today because one of the the greatest contributors to this issue is that society has accepted failed inheritances as normal. I mean, think about it. Most people don't even question that Aunt Sally isn't talking to Uncle Bob anymore after Grandma died. We've just accepted it as normal. And, we, and the lack of understanding of what the real issue, that the failed inheritance is just the effect, not the cause, that the real cause is the lack of communication and trust between family members, and the prepared, uh, preparedness of the heirs, that's where the legacy family planning comes into play because by creating a plan within the family that's currently missing for most families, we are taking the time to prepare the heirs, build that communication and trust before the inheritance situation happens. So, so you you're calling it legacy family planning. I don't, I don't really think I've heard of that before. Why not? Well, most likely it is a new term to the general public, but if you had 30 to $100 million, you'd be aware of it. <laughs> until, <Okay>. recently, <laughs> until recently, legacy family planning has been limited to the ultra-wealthy families, and they are, they are very familiar with this process. Uh, they are supported by a relatively unknown industry called the family office industry. And legacy family planning isn't new. It's just new to families who have less than, you know, $30 million. So, so at, well, someday <laughs> I could have $30 million. I'm looking forward to that. But today... Um, who does benefit from adding the legacy family planning to their estate plans? Who, who would you say would be the people who should really be listening to us right now? Well, you know, I'm passionate about this topic because I've been through the pain. And the interesting, um, you know, I have 100% audience participation because we're all going to die. Uh, but what I've found is that people that have been financially successful are more apt to take action because they've got more at stake. They've, they've worked hard. They've created a pool of financial assets. They're dedicated to providing the best for their family. They just don't know how. So, so they don't know how, so that's where you come in, right? Not only me, but also the entire new industry. Uh, we are 
creating a, a new industry because I'm just a party of one. And to serve the needs, you know, we've got $30 trillion that are expected to transfer in the next 30 years as baby boomers pass away. I mean, most American families are unprepared for the greatest threat that they've ever faced, and it comes from within inside their own family. You know, once the curse of inheritance is unleashed, you can't put them back in the bottle. Right, because if, if you're feuding with your family members, then, you know, I, I know that it, you mentioned it um, earlier about the communication and trust. So how does the, the family plan, the legacy family plan um, work, and um, how would you be, apply it or get involved well, the- with it? So here, there's four ingredients for a legacy family plan. So the first ingredient is that you have to have a family founder with financial assets who's willing to put these assets for the family's benefit, and and I call it with a 100-year vision. They are looking 100 years into the future to see how they can best protect their family. The next ingredient is actually called the rising generation. It's the next generation who's willing to accept stewardship of the financial assets and then take ownership of the family vision. And the third piece, which is what the legacy family plan actually is, it's a governance plan for the assets and the family members' agreement to honor the commitment to each other. They are forming a family-first culture where they are committed to one another. Because think about it, if you had a single thread of strand, you know, a single strand of thread, how easy would it be to break that thread? Well, it's very easy. Right. But what the legacy family plan does is it takes all the threads of the family and binds them together. And if you were to try to break those threads that are bound together, it'd be very difficult. So that's what the legacy family plan does. And there's a final ingredient that I found common within all the family plans uh, that I've studied, and that is the family has a desire to be in service to others. Without this desire to be in service to others, it ends up just being it's all about the family and that is unsustainable. So with the, the stewardship and the gratitude for the assets and the desire to make the world a better place, that's how these legacy families grow their assets generation after generation after generation to meet the needs of their growing family. Okay, so I, do you have some examples of maybe some of, of a good case study that you could share um, so that we could kind of paint a picture of it? Sure. Um, there's actually many, uh, but they're, they stay relatively unknown. Uh, one of the... Uh, I would say the poster child for the legacy families would be the Rothschild family. Um, The Rothschild's wealth was built in the 1760s. I mean, they were supplying Napoleon with uh, goods for his battle with Russia. And this family has stayed together, and you'll find Rothschilds today. Their wealth is still privately owned, and generation after generation, after generation, this family has transferred wealth and stayed bound together to each other. So, the, so that is from, you said the 1760s, and now obviously, so now we're into the 2000s, so that they would be an example of how they've been able to transfer the wealth through hundreds of years. Do you have any other examples of of maybe someone um, in modern, you know, from more modern times? Sure, and that's my next book is going to be bringing together some examples of some modern day families. Uh huh. Um, Nordstrom. I don't know if you're familiar with Nordstrom's department store. Yeah. They are in their third generation of ownership of that store. Um, one of the oldest companies in America, the, the, and I, I don't know if I can say the name right, but they make um, symbols here in the United States. Uh, it's a, I, I don't know how to say their name correctly, but they're, they were founded in 1623, 
and they are still a family-owned business. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Bill Bonner, who's the founder of Agora Inc., and he actually is a best-selling author, and he shares his story of creating his legacy family. So there are examples out there they are just not well-known. Oh, that's, that, that's really interesting. So, so the books that you have, it's the, course, the curse, excuse me, Curse of Inheritance, and that's where you're actually talking about how to protect your family from being broke and bitter and the blame. And then the new book is The Legacy Family Way. Is that right? Yes. I'm very excited about The Legacy Family Way because it, by putting it in book form and laying out the step-by-step process, anybody who has the um, – Fortitude will have the information that they need to create their own legacy family plan. So in the legacy family way, um, is is this book available yet? It will be available on Amazon.com on December 24th. Oh, cool. Very exciting. And then we'll have it available in print form in first quarter of 2017. Okay, so that's really, really soon, and by the time this show actually airs, it's probably just days away. So here's a question. Um, You say that you provide in in the Legacy Family Way the step-by-step instructions. So can you just give an idea of, of, like, how you outline that in terms of what, what would a family look at first? if they're going to start uh, doing the legacy family plan? Well, the, the, the legacy family plan is a three-phase process. In the first phase, the family founders lay the foundation for the plan. And what I mean by that is they identify their core values. And the, the main thing that they do is accept the mantle of leadership and adopt a consciousness mindset, and and create a 100-year vision for the family. And the reason why this is important is, you know, we we are all um, somewhat dysfunctional in our family relationships. Um, We have hurts that we carry from childhood. Um, We mistreat the people that we love the best. We carry stories about each other that may or may not be true that we refuse to let go. And so by taking this consciousness mindset and accepting the man of leadership with a 100-year vision, it allows you to look past those, you know, I would just say day-to-day uh, irritations to see the bigger picture. And, and I can give you an example of that. Um, I am actually in the midst of training the third generation in our commercial real estate company. Um, I took over... Uh, management of the commercial real estate or a portion of the commercial real estate company when my parents passed away and with the authorship of the books that I've uh, written this year I'll I'll have written three books in one year I've turned over the day-to-day operations to my oldest daughter and in the training of her in this new endeavor with the hundred year vision I'm able to look past well why did you miss making that payment on time? Because it really doesn't matter. Um, the, the interesting um, aspect of legacy family planning is that we look to create some key characteristics. And one of the key characteristics that I encourage families to adopt is the ability to create an environment where mistakes are okay. Because when you allow people to make mistakes, it gives them the opportunity to learn. So that's the first thing. The second phase is called the participation phase. And if your family is like mine, you already have adult children. You know, adopting a legacy family plan when your children are small would be the easiest time to create one. But unfortunately, I didn't know about legacy family planning when my children were small. And by creating the plan now, my grandchildren will benefit from the plan. So I've got to ask my children, my adult children, if they're willing to participate. Because it doesn't matter what I want, I'll be gone. 
if they're not willing to see the value of the plan and have their input on it, then they won't carry it forward. So the, the middle phase is all about participating with your adult children, passing the torch of leadership to them, and co-creating a vision. And in the final phase, the creation phase, you draft, adopt, and implement a plan. Now, the interesting thing about legacy family planning is once you've begun it, it's a lifelong process. And we have a membership site that we're building that will help legacy families continue the process. We've got a calendar set out so each month our families will receive the prompt of an action item to take that strengthens their family for the future. It's, it's very exciting. Oh, that does sound very exciting. And and you you also are the leader of the Legacy Family Planning Association. Can you tell me more about that? Yes. Um, I, I realized that I couldn't help. Um, I, I mean, my goal is to help at least a million families. Um, nothing like thinking small, right? And I knew that I couldn't do it alone. And this industry, this is a missing industry that families need. And to create the professionalism to provide to the families, we've uh, got the Legacy Family uh, Planners Association. It will be uh, certifying and licensing uh, new planners in 2017. Uh, Anybody who wants to provide this service, Two families can go through the program. They agree to a code of ethics. They actually um, have to have created a legacy family plan for themselves because they need that experience. So uh, soon I expect that families will have an attorney to create their state plan. They'll have a financial planner to create their wealth plan. They'll have the CPA to create their tax plan. And they'll have their legacy family planner to prepare their family. Wow. So you've, you've basically let us in some on the secrets of the ultra-wealthy people about how you can have successful wealth transfers and how you can create that legacy that will have your values and your visions moving forward, just like the Rothschild family for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, that's really pretty fascinating. And I really think, like you said, because uh, the baby boomer generation, which is one of what one of the largest generations of, in terms of population, uh, you know, they are starting to age, and they need to be thinking about this. And you started out by telling us that 55 percent of people don't even have a will. Is that correct? Yes, sadly it's true. And, and that's what the curse of inheritance is about. Um, right. The curse of inheritance is the red flag book that says, hey, this is the dangers that you are putting your family through. You know, um, the most recent, quote, famous death was when Prince passed away without a will. And, you know, in the curse of inheritance, I tell people, spoiler alert, you don't have to be old to die. Right. And... And you don't know, you know, I I heard the other day somebody said it and I thought it was really interesting because they asked the question, they said, how many of you know what your birth date is? Of course, everyone raised their hand. And then the question was, how many of you know what your death date is? And of course, most people don't know that answer. So I thought that was a a very uh, mind, uh, mind boggling question to think about. So, Cindy, do you have anything else that you that maybe I forgot to ask you about that's really, really important that you'd like to share? Well, I, I would have to share that one of the side benefits of this legacy family planning process for me has been an incredible sweetness and appreciation for life. By anticipating and spending quite a bit of time anticipating and preparing my children and grandchildren for a time without me has made each day an incredible gift that I enjoy. And so it's, it, it, it just is difficult to explain. You know, to your point, you don't know when you're going to die. 
And by becoming a legacy family leader, I have been given the gift of enjoying every single day as the incredible gift that it is. Well, that's really beautiful, and uh, I love the name of your um, company, Legacy Family Revolution, and you're really leading a revolution to help people to create the vision and the family legacy, because like, like you said, the legacy family planning is really important, and so congratulations for being somebody who has that bigger vision and also who has the heart to lead um, in something that, like you said, nobody likes to talk about it. Nobody likes to talk about death, yet we need to acknowledge that we're not going to live forever and that if we really want to leave a family legacy, we need to sit down and plan it and process it and put it into motion and put it into writing and like you said, get the buy-in with the family for communication so that we don't have those issues of people fighting over the money when in re reality it's not about the money at all. It, it should be more about that family legacy. So tell me, Cindy, where can we find out more about you and your services? Well, we've got the website at... Uh, you know, www Legacy Family Revolution, and we are adding just free information all the time. And in 2017, for uh, anybody who's passionate about helping other people, the Legacy Family Planners Association com will be available for uh, dates and times for classes. And you know. My goal is to bring legacy family planning to the forefront. So um, I really am excited and appreciate you having me on today so that I can share this important message with folks. Well, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for taking the time to share the legacy family revolution. And congratulations on Curse of Inheritance and the Legacy Family Way books because it is really important. Education is the key uh, to helping people. So thank you so much for coming today. All right, Tammy, thank you. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a great day. You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.